a place near and dear to my heart and my background. We are taking you to Ireland and how to do the Emerald Isle the right way. Our expert, Trina Vargo, has an undercover jet setter tour for you. Sit back and have a Jameson. Undercover Jet Setter, navigating your world. And hi, everyone. Talking with me about Ireland today is Trina Vargo. Trina is the founder and president of the U.S.-Ireland Alliance. She is the author of the new book called Shenanigans, the U.S.-Ireland Relationship in Uncertain Times. And she has spent many years visiting Ireland. Welcome and cheers, Trina. I have a shot of Jameson's on the rocks. How about you? <laughs> it's a bit early for me, John, but then again, I, I, I heard someone say it's 6 p.m. somewhere in the world. Uh, well, I will take up the slack for you. Don't worry, my dear. All right. So how, how long have you actually been going to Ireland? It's probably nearly 30 years now, and I tend to go three times a year. Wow. Uh, now, you know I love golf, and so I, I'm going to start with golf. And many years ago, I played in one of the U.S.-Ireland Alliance's golf challenges in Ireland that you set up. Uh, it was a great tournament at the K Club that's outside Dublin. And you always brought together really interesting people in the tournament. That was It was well organized and a ton of fun. Are you going to hold any more tournaments like that? Uh, you know, as you know, those were Ryder Cup uh, format tournaments where we had 12 Americans playing 12 Irish. And the last one we held was just before the economy crashed around mm -hmm. 2008. But as the economy is coming back, uh, if we find sufficient interest from sponsors, we'd, we'd look to bring it back because people really did enjoy them. And, and, and it was as interesting as the golf was, the dinners are still memorable to me. You made sure that, not that you had to do this, that the Americans and the Irish really got to know each other. And I still have stories today from some of the Irish businessmen and women uh, that, that I actually had a chance to sit down and talk with. Are, are you looking at that again? Yeah, I think we do it in the same format if we bring it back. Um, the Irish, now you say it, the Irish have a word um, for people having good fun and conversations, and, and the word is crack, which is spelled C-R-A-I-C. Um, and we've always tried to involve people who, who we knew would be good crack. Wow. Well, that's good crack for me. I always enjoy that. That's for sure. Um, all right. Let's let's talk a little bit more about golf because the uh, the Open, the British Open, was just paid, played at the Royal Point Rush in Northern Ireland. Any chance that that uh, the the tournament, the Open, might actually be held in Ireland? Uh, there are several players like Padraig Harrington and Rory McIlroy who would like to see it held at Port Marnock, which is a golf course in Dublin. But that course doesn't accept women members, and so they won't get the Open unless they change that. Um, and those guys are trying to do that. Hmm. And now, have you ever played at Port Mar Marnock? Um, to be honest, I've been invited, but I've declined. I'm I'm just not interested in playing on a golf course that wouldn't have me as a member. There, there and there are so many great courses in Ireland. There are many others to choose from, but both Harrington and McIlroy are pressuring Port Myers to change their rules and accept women members, and that change is long overdue. So I hope they're successful. Yeah, me too. Uh, we are talking uh, Ireland with Trina Vargo, our expert on Ireland. She is the founder and president of the U.S.-Ireland Alliance. She is also the author of a new book called Shenanigans, the U.S.-Ireland Relationship in Uncertain Times. Uh, let's let's talk about some of the other courses in Ireland that, that are highly regarded that you would recommend. Well, Old Head in the south of Ireland is high in world ranking. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lynx courses like La Hinch and Waterville are popular. And all the buzz now is the golf course at Dare Manor, which is outside Limerick. Um, the owner there, J.P. McManus, has put a lot of money into the course, and it'll host the 2026 Ryder Cup. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's for sure. Um, when is a good time to visit Ireland? I really like September and May. I mm -hmm. confess that I try to avoid places at the time of year where there's a big tourism crush. Um, so I would, I would probably pick those two months. I think those are great because the weather is still really good. It's temperate and you can enjoy yourself. Um, what I thought was fascinating was you had me over there in June and it was like 930 quarter of 10 at night. And you could have actually played golf at that time of year. Yes. And if you're in the west of Ireland sometimes, I, I remember being in far in the west of Ireland and I swear it was 11 o'clock at night and it was still like twilight. It's true. It stays, the, the light is, is great in the summer. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Let's um, let's let's talk about places to stay. If if you're in Dublin, where do you stay? 
Well, I always stay at the Westbury Hotel, which is in the center of Dublin. Now, full disclosure, that hotel has always supported our nonprofit, hence my staying there. But that said, I first stayed there before that. And I just, I like the hotel and its location. I can walk nearly everywhere I want to go. They have two restaurants in-house, a great bar, afternoon tea. It's an easy place for people to meet me there. Um, and they have great concierges, which is always a test for me with hotels. And mm-hmm. they've been there for forever, and they really know the city. So the Westbury has just become a sort of home away from from home for me. Yeah, I can see that. And and Dublin was, uh, and in certain parts were really a, a, a good walking city. Uh, do they, and I used a lot of taxi cabs when I was there before. Do they have Uber and Lyft and things like that as well? They do. They don't have Lyft, but they have Uber. And there's, a, I think it's My Taxi is the app I use over there. They have, they have a, a similar app. So yes, you, you can do the ride sharing. Wow. All right. So first time visitor to Dublin, what do they need to see? Um, tourists are always very fond of the Guinness Storehouse and the Book of Kells at Trinity College, but my favorite is Kilmainham Jail. Um, I especially advise it as a way to get your head around Irish history in about two hours. Uh, that jail has seen so much of Irish history, from the famine to the place where the leaders of the Easter Rising of 1916 were executed. I mean, I've probably been there 10 times and I never get tired of it. You know, and I, I can confirm that, Trina, because you told me the exact same thing. And I actually toured the prison. Plus, with the history there, I saw that one, likely one of my ancestors, Michael Daly, was executed there in 1916. And again, uh, as I always mentioned before, if you have any Irish in you, you will feel it there. And I, I just, I, I felt, I felt at home there. That's for sure. And I felt that there was a big part of my history there as well. Uh, give, give me some more spots. Well, I'm a big fan of writing, and you know, I love Irish writing literature, so I like the Writers' Museum, which is at Parnell Square in Dublin. It's not flashy or interactive, but if you love writing, you'll enjoy it. Um, and while you're there, practically next door, there's the Hugh Lane Gallery, which is an art gallery, which has um, Francis Bacon's studio exactly as it was when they died, oh, when wow. he died, sorry. Um, the home of James Joyce is also nearby. Um, for many years, there's also been a really excellent exhibition of the poet W.B. Yeats at the National Library of Ireland, which it's really worth checking out. That's right in Center City. Um, another fairly recent addition is the Epic Museum, and it's a museum that's about Irish emigration, and it's interactive, very well done, great spot for the whole family. And then I would also tell people to check out some plays. I mean, the art is great in, in Ireland, all the cultural things, um, you know, places like the Abbey and the Gate Theatres, and, and there are many more. Oh, I love that. Great recommendations. We are talking Ireland with Trina Vargo, our expert on Ireland. She is the founder and president of the U.S.-Ireland Alliance. She is the author of a new book called Shenanigans and the U.S.-Irish, the U.S.-Ireland relationship in uncertain times. Okay, let's, let's talk food. Where do you eat? Yes, the most important part. Um, <laughs> look, I, I, I confess I'm a creature of habit, and I really like Dun & Crescenzi, which is an Italian place with great coffee, excellent food, good prices, very popular. I, I go there way too much. Um, for authentic Irish cuisine, you could try the Winding Stair, which is excellent. Um, there's also there's a great new Asian place called Pickle. Um, Bewley's Cafe on Grafton Street is an institution. And it was closed for years, but I was very happy that when they reopened it, they really retained what was special about it. So it's always sort of a must stop for tourists in Ireland. Uh, Touch on a little bit of of Dublin's culinary experience, because the joke used to be an Irish seven course meal was a six pack and a can of beer. But when I was there 10 years ago, I was amazed at some of the big name chefs who built restaurants with a wide range, uh, wide range of cuisines like you're just mentioning. In a way, it kind of reminded me of the food boom in Vegas. And I guess oh, it's yeah. still that way. Yeah, you know, there's no shortage of good restaurants in Ireland. Um, the Irish cuisine is excellent. A foodie culture has really, has definitely developed there. And immigrants from around the world have brought their traditions and dishes to Ireland. And that's made it all the better. You know, gone are the days of just fish and chips. Now, that said, uh, go to Burdock's if you want good fish and chips. It's, a, it's uh, an institution in Dublin. I, I, good recommendation. Okay. Now, I know you like to hike. Are, are, are there good hiking areas near Dublin? Yes. Um, in fact, all of Ireland is just great if you love walking and hiking. About 40 minutes outside of town 
You can do a cliff walk uh, along the along the water from Bray to Greystones. It's it's really lovely on a nice day. I think it's about a two two and a half hour walk. It's not strenuous. It's pretty flat. And then the gardens at the Powers Court Estate are nearby, and that's also a nice place to find a quiet spot, grab some food. There's a um, there's an Avoca shop there, which um, sells you know lovely Irish things if you want to take some presents home for your family and friends. Wow, that's perfect. You hit a couple of different things. You bring home folks for the family, yet at the same time too, you get your exercise and you get your uh, you get your walking in at the same time too. Um, I know that recent st- uh, Star Wars film was filmed there in the west of Ireland, and you're you're kind of responsible for that uh, because of the uh, Oscar Wilde Awards that you do in Los Angeles, and you encourage director J.J. Abrams to film something in Ireland. Tell us about that. J.J. gave. Uh, quite a gift to Ireland with those scenes of Ray and Luke, which were, you know, Daisy Ridley and Mark Hamill on Skellig Michael, which is it's a small island off the coast of County Kerry. And that that movie will mean millions and millions for the Irish economy in terms of tourism. Uh, Skellig Michael, stunning. It's very popular now, so you have to book in advance to be able to get on. But many also take boats and like sort of circle around it, around the island. Um, there's There are three peninsulas to County Kerry, and each are great in their own way. The, the, the furthest south is the Barra Peninsula, and it's the least touristy, and I cycled around it once, and it's great for cycling, as there are just fewer cars and people. Um, it's the most sort of un, undisturbed uh, of the three. Skellig Michael is off the coast of the, you know, where the famed Ring of Kerry is, and that's on the Evera Peninsula. And there are many beautiful spots there, including the town of Kenmare and the home of Daniel O'Connell, who in Irish history is the great liberator. Um, I'm also a, a huge fan of the third peninsula, which is the Dingle Peninsula. And if you're a hiker, probably my favorite hike in Ireland is up Mount Brandon, which is on Dingle. I'm trying to think of the elevation. I think it's around 3,000 feet. It's the second highest mountain in Ireland, but in U.S. terms, it's not. I mean, don't be overwhelmed by that. Um, I would suggest uh, hiking up from the town of Clahan, which is to the east, and then you can come down the other side of the mountain toward the Atlantic Ocean. And you see lakes in the mountain that you just can't see in any other way unless you do the hike. And finally, I, you know, I have to always give a pitch. County Clare, uh, the Cliffs of Moher are very famous, and the Burren, it's just, it's a beautiful place as well. The West Coast is stunning. What I like about uh, about that is that you know we, we talk about food then you need to go exercise and what a great way to exercise and to see everything <laughs> yeah. and, and take the hike that's what's so great about that now as a regular visitor where are the places you go that the first time tourist is unlikely to visit you know i went to a place about a year or two ago for the first time which i now love it's called Loch Hine, and Loch is the irish word for lake and this lake is it's not far from a town called skibbereen um, and you can do a night kayak trip there from about 9 p.m. till midnight. And it it's magical. The lake is bioluminescent. And that mm. bioluminescence is, it's, yeah, it's the production, for anybody who doesn't know, of an emission of light by a living organism. So think about like fireflies. And this bioluminescence is in the water. So when you dip your oar in, it lights up as if there are fireflies flickering beneath the surface. Yeah, it's. It's so peaceful. It's so idyllic. I just want to like live there and never go back to civilization. I can't. I can't say enough about it. And and when we were out that way, we also had an incredible meal at O'Connor's Seafood Restaurant it's in Bantry in West Cork. And the chef there, Anne Marie Butler, is one of Ireland's finest. Like it's worth you know making the trip for that restaurant. Um, and you know also I always visit with the Benedictine monks in Glenstall Abbey. They're very welcome. Glenstall Abbey is, you know, it's outside of Limerick, and it's a, uh, it's it's also a boys' school, but it's a, another great spot. They're very welcoming to our Mitchell scholars, the kids that we give scholarships to study in Ireland, and we we regularly meet there with the former abbot, Mark Patrick Hederman, who's a very fascinating person, and you can attend vespers, where they are chanting. Uh, in fact, I think Sinead O'Connor did a, uh, a, C- a DVD, CD, whatever we're calling it now, music with the monks out there. And, uh, and you can also enjoy, yeah, the beautiful music of Noreen Nguyen. 
Wow. So you get a little bit of a spiritual feel there too. Uh, briefly, talk about the luminescence. Just it's, if, if you're there, can will your camera actually pick it up if you wanted to get pictures or video of that? Have you done no, that? No. Do you know what? No. In fact, they, um, I, don't know that it would, I don't know that it would pick it up. They highly recommend that you like leave your camera, like they lock everything up um, when uh, you go out. Now, I did take my camera anyhow. I was willing to assume that I wouldn't drop it into the lake. And I did try to take a picture too, but you know, it, it's so dark. It's so hard to get those shots. Um, but, and you have to go at the right time of the year. So they can't promise you, like it doesn't necessarily happen every night, but I think it's over the summer months. Like you, you can check it all out online, but it's, um, I think it's called Sea Kayaking Ireland, something like that. But if you look up Loch Hine, H-Y-N-E, you'll find it. But I think it's mainly sort of in the, you know, spring, summer months. I mean, I think I did it in about June that you have the best chance of, uh, of getting the, the nice weather for it. Okay. Talk, talk about, talk about Northern Ireland. I mean, that should be a place people should take a look at too. Yes. Um, Titanic Belfast is worth a visit. Um, and some of the game of Thrones was filmed there. Mm -hmm. So there's a tourist trail focused on that. There in, in Belfast, there are these black taxi tours, which you can take and, and the driver will tell you, uh, who may have been a former paramilitary, can tell you all about the history <laughs> of the troubles in Northern Ireland. And a place I haven't been yet, but we're looking forward to visiting um, next year is the home place of the Nobel Prize winning poet Seamus Heaney. So there's lots to do in Northern Ireland as well. Just just real briefly, because people know about the, the, you know, the, the troubles in Northern Ireland that is a safe place to go right now. People don't need to worry about that. Is that right? Yes. I mean, it, it, it's as, you know, it's as safe as probably going to any major city in the United States are probably mm -hmm. safer. I mean, even in the days when things were a lot worse, I remember when I first went to Ireland and, and the, the troubles were still going on and I'm based in Washington, DC. And my mother was very concerned about my going to Northern Ireland. And I looked up the murder rates and it was a greater, you had a greater chance of being killed in Washington, D.C. than in Northern Ireland, which only made my mother want me to move home to Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, I've always considered, like, it's like anywhere else. If you don't go to places where you shouldn't be going, you're, I would say you're perfectly fine. All right. We are talking Ireland with Trina Vargo, our expert on Ireland. Trina is the founder and president of the U.S.-Ireland Alliance. And you can go to that website. It's us-irelandalliance.org. She is the author of a new book called Shenanigans, the U.S.-Ireland Relationship in Uncertain Times. Um, you and I were recently talking about Brexit and the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. And you mentioned a cycling idea. Talk about that. Yes, we talked about that after we got off the line the last time. Um, yeah, a, a member of our, of our board and I are, are still thinking it through, but we already did, you know, one recce up there. The idea would be to cycle back and forth across uh, certain parts of the border, um, you know, maybe something like a three-day trip. Uh, you know, I really hope that a hard border does not return with Brexit because now you can go back and forth with, with such ease. I mean, it would be horrible if that's lost. Um, but yeah, it's like the golf. If I find some people that are interesting in, in, in a fundraising cycle, a small one, um, we're, mull we're mulling over lots of ideas how we'd do that. And I've been reading several books uh, suggested to me by actually the Irish author Colm Toybean. Um, he, he knows a lot about the border and he himself actually wrote a book called Bad Blood when he walked the border. So it could be a very interesting trip if done properly. Wow. Okay. I'm going to have to take a look at that. Uh, as far as booking an Irish trip, any suggestions for the person who either likes to book it themselves or for those who like to use a travel agent? I, I have to say I book everything myself on my travel. I'm, mm -hmm. I, and I'm also a big fan, you know, in most bookstores, you know, like Barnes and Noble and that they have the eyewitness. There's a, uh, a brand of tourism guides called eyewitness. There'll be an eyewitness Ireland. And I think that's a great thing to start with. If you look at that, you can really hone in on the parts of the country that interest you the most to visit. And also, if you Google Tourism Ireland, um, you can find information there. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, wow. Uh, Trina, thanks. Uh, thanks for joining me here. And folks, you may want to return to Ireland right away. Hopefully, some of you golfers and cyclists, Trina, they, hopefully they're going to reach out to you. I know your email address can be found on the U.S.-Ireland Alliance website. Yes, definitely. I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear from those interested, and thanks for having me, John. 
Well, and we've been talking Ireland with Trina Vargo, our expert on Emerald on the Emerald Isle. Trina is the founder and president of the U.S. Ireland Alliance. She is the author of a new book called Shenanigans: The U.S. Ireland Relationship in Uncertain Times. I recommend that you read that. Trina, as they say, top of the morning to you. <laughs> See you later, John. All right, thank you, and all of you. Thanks for listening in. Cheers. See segments and episodes at youtube.com slash undercoverjetsetter.